Hello. <clears throat> Today I'm going to uh, talk about two movies uh, a bit. Uh, someday I may talk about these movies individually, uh, but right now I just wanted to sort of uh, give my own thoughts on uh, uh, these movies briefly. They're uh, 40 years old this year. Uh, same with uh, Apocalypse Now many others, but these two are movies I really enjoy uh, from 1979. Um, and um, they are Being There, starring Peter Sellers, and All That Jazz, for, uh, starring Roy Scheider. Uh, this is directed by Hal Ashby, and this is directed by Bob Fosse. Um, being there. Um, I think we'll talk about being there first for a moment. Um, uh, it's uh, one of uh, Peter Sellers' final films. He uh, This was a passion project of his. Uh, he plays uh, Chance uh, Gardner. Um, he was raised uh, in a home where he was it was a very wealthy home, and he was taken care of, and he t tended the garden. Um, but the owner of the house, uh, he passes away, and as a result, you know, him and the housekeeper, she has to leave the house, as does he, because you know, you know, without the uh, owner of the home, he has to. Uh, a vacate and leave somewhere, and uh, he's a very simple man, as they put it. He really was raised on television. He knows what he does thanks to television. He's a very nice man, but he also is very good at gardening. Um, <clears throat> and uh, through a series of events, uh, he meets. Shirley MacLaine's character, and she takes them to her house and meets her husband, who's a very wealthy man, as, and uh, they all begin a, uh, quite a friendship, and uh, uh, the older gentleman in the film is played by a... Uh, Melvin Douglas, yes. I wanted to make sure I, uh, yeah. I didn't uh, mistake his... Uh, uh, I, I wanted to make sure I got his name right. and It was who I was thinking of, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, yeah. And um, Shirley MacLaine's character, she really takes a fondness to, to Chance, and Again, he's sort of childlike as a result of him essentially being quite simple. And he has these allegories, or way of putting things uh, with gardening, and they seem so profound. And yet he's talking about gardening, but people take that as various other ways, like of meaning stuff. Um, and then he, when... This uh, rich man, you know, meets with the uh, the uh, uh, president because uh, they're old friends, basically. And um, he meets Chance, and they're talking about something that he's in a quite of a bind with. And with his words, he seems to be quite fascinated, and seems to be initially a bit. A little annoyed, yet he, like pretty much everybody in the movie, they grow fond of him, regardless of the way he puts things and how simple he might be at just speaking. 
just putting things plainly so everybody can understand them. But again, people mistake what he says for something uh, a lot more profound than what he's really talking about. Um, yeah, Melvin Douglas won an Academy Award for this film. Um, and Peter Sellers uh, was nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, he did not win. He lost to Dustin Hoffman for Kramer vs. Kramer. Um, yeah, uh, and, and on the uh, on the uh, Doctor Strange Love documentary, or on um, that Criterion set, there is a documentary with Peter Sellers, and uh, he was disappointed when he lost the Oscar. Dr. Strangelove, and then he was even more crushed, seems, at losing the Oscar for this film. Um, he won the Golden Globe for actor in a musical or comedy. Um, uh, I don't think he won the BAFTA. I think that was Dustin Hoffman also, I want to say. I could be wrong. Um, uh, but, uh, again, back then, you know, that wasn't necessarily a indicator of sort of sometimes uh, people would win a bunch of stuff but then they would lose the Oscar uh, but there is a reel at the end of the film which is a blooper reel um, and uh, Peter Sellers thinks because of that reel that blooper reel of the various takes where he has to go through this one scene over and over again and keeps messing up or just laughs or something. He believes the magic of the movie was gone. Like the it was broken. And because of that, he did not win the Oscar. Um, now, I completely understand where he's coming from. I don't necessarily think that should have been the reason he didn't win the Academy Award. I um, would hope it's because, you know, that's not the game of better performance. Though I sort of think it's because he didn't win 10 years prior for Midnight Cowboy uh, because the Academy wanted to right the wrong of John Wayne never winning an Academy Award. Probably particularly for the fact that they snubbed him in the entire film of The Searchers back in 56. So they rectified that by giving John Wayne his, you know, overdue Oscar. And so Dustin Hoffman wins his Oscar, yet Peter Sellers never receives an Academy Award. Even though I think if he was ever to have one, I would have personally have chosen, a, I would choose Dr. Strangelove, because that really does show his di the diversity that Peter Sellers has. Just shows how great... What, at acting as different characters and with voices. He's really incredible in that film. And in this film, too. He was really deserving of the nomination and would have been worthy of a win. Which brings me up uh, now to this film, All That Jazz. Roy Scheider was also nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actor. Like Sellers, he lost to Dustin Hoffman. Uh, he lost the BAFTA, I believe, to Dustin Hoffman. And he lost the Golden Globe to Peter Sellers, since the Golden Globes likes to pit the best actor, uh, people, uh, performances, and comedies and musicals together. Because I guess, you know, musicals aren't necessarily always a huge thing every year. Sometimes. There's like one or two good musicals a year that deserve to be nominated, but then the rest are just comedy. And uh, so, I guess instead of having three categories of drama, comedy, and musicals, uh, the Golden Globes just put comedy and musicals together. Um, so, uh, he lost out on uh, 
the awards and he was nominated previously for the French connection for supporting actor but I think this is his best performance honestly my favorite performance is Jaws though I sometimes do go back and forth on Jaws and this for best performance sometimes they tie uh, I think I'm fairly comfortable with his performance in this movie tying with Jaws I know he liked Jaws the first one but the second one not necessarily as much because you know he thought the shark was the main star that's the only reason people would go and see it not because of him or or Gary or any of the other films or any other actors returning but uh, because of the shark and you know in a way he's right um, but I for one loved him in Jaws I loved Brody uh, especially because he played him uh, how he played him um, I think he just did an incredible job but this he really does shine he sings he dances and acts he's incredible uh, so if I do one day say this is Roy Scheider's best performance and I do put Jaws second place I have no problem with that but essentially this movie is pretty much the uh, life of Bob Bossy during a time he was making or editing Lenny a film about a comedian starring Dustin Hoffman um, and uh, while doing that, he's also doing a, well, a play at the same time. And um, this culminates into him having a heart attack and everything. And in real life, you know, during that time, you know, uh, Bob Fosse was really stressing himself out. And, um, yeah, it's a pretty much a biopic of source semi-autobiographical by Bob Fosse it's a great film um, I myself am not really fond of musicals honestly um, I enjoy this movie I enjoy uh, Moulin Rouge with uh, Ewan McGregor and Hugh Jack uh, not Hugh Jack that's another movie. Uh, and Nicole Kidman and Les Miserables with Hugh Jackman and Russell Crowe and Anne Hathaway and But yeah, I, I just love this movie. Uh, you know, uh, Joe Gideon, who uh, Roy Scheider plays, is, you know, he's, he's it's Bob Fosse. You know, he is a guy who loves women, loves to have sex with one woman and to another and all that. He loves to drink. He uh, takes prescription uh, drugs for I don't know what ails him and everything. And he's he's like a chain smoker and everything. Yeah, at one point in the movie, you see him. Yeah, he's like smoking in the shower. Like that's how much of a smoker he is. He's literally smoking until it's just wet and you can't get anything out of the cigarette anymore. And it's really pointless to smoke. Uh, I I don't know. I just love this movie. Uh, the way it's shot, the way it's acted and written, it's just fantastic. Um, while many will always say and point to Apocalypse Now being the best movie of 1979, and with good reason, I actually think all that jazz is a bit better. Um, I don't know why. I, I, it could be because, well, I'm not a musical fan. This movie really is just, I think it just elevates the musical genre in a way I've never seen before or even since. Um, I mean, I guess Moulin Rouge and, you know, Les Miserables are very ambitious and very good in how they, uh, uh they, do the musical genre yet I just really love all that jazz could also come down to Roy Scheider I'm a 
fan of his. And I just enjoy everyone else. Um, actually, uh, and in Wright King essentially plays herself. Her character, you know, has an affair uh, with him, and uh, pretty much, you know, and she had an affair with Bob Fosse. They were in a relationship while he and Gwen Verdon were uh, separated. They never got divorced. Um, and uh, some of the stuff that, uh, some of the dialogue and situations that occur in the movie between uh, Joe and his girlfriend, Joe and uh, his daughter, occurred with Bob Fosse and and Bob Fosse and his actual daughter um, in real life. And the uh, miniseries uh, Fosse Verdon uh, highlights that when it gets to the all that jazz segment of the uh, uh, miniseries. You know, it, it really uh, uh, shows how much real life Bob Fosse put into this movie. Even though he does what he came up, no, 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 it's not, it's not, not, it's not me. It's, it's this character, it's Joe. You know, it's not Bob. It's Joe. You know, and Joe's like that. You know, Bob is also like that. You know, um, he, uh, yeah, Bob, Bob Fosse made a real masterpiece with this. He also made Cabaret. Which I I enjoy as a film. You know, it's a very good film. But I think this is his best work. Um, again, many will probably say Cabaret. But I just love this movie. There's just something about it I enjoy. Um, same with Being There. It's a great comedy. Great film. Great performances in both films. Great story in both films. Directed incredibly incredibly well um, you know it's uh, I just love it I just love both of them uh, you know I'm sure one day I will do uh, do uh, other videos with these two movies um, individually um, but I just wanted to quickly just talk about them as best as I could just to pr show my appreciation of these movies. Um, yeah, I do like all that jazz a bit more, but I still love being there. And I think with being there, it's one of those comedies. It's like, you know, you should just watch it. Same with all that jazz, but I think all that jazz gets a bit more attention than being there. And with being there, I don't know what I can really say that could do it justice. I mean, there's so much you can say about all that jazz, especially since that uh, miniseries that came out last year, or, or earlier this year, not last year. I'm already thinking it's 2020. But, you know, I, it is, you know, that just really laid out a lot of things and sort of, I'm sure, brought back some of the memories and discussions of the films of Bob Fosse, including all that jazz. Yet with being there... You know, it's not uh, exactly a. It's not necessarily a. A gem that is. Not valued because it was very well received and liked when it came out, but it isn't talked about as often. These days, occasionally maybe talking about Peter Sellers and great performances, it will come up, along with Doctor Strange Love and the Pink Panther, and rightfully so. But it's a movie that just doesn't get talked about a lot any these days. Um, <clears throat> I love it. I hope to talk about this film sometime soon. Same with all that jazz. Um, but yeah, I I enjoy these movies and uh, yeah, I love these releases too by Criterion. They're incredible. Um, so yeah. That's really all I have to say. Uh, 
what do you think of these movies? Do you enjoy them? Uh, do you think they're really good? Uh, do you think they're not very good? Or maybe you're on the fence? Maybe you like them, but not as much as how I'm trying to express my enthusiasm for them. Um, what do you think? If you want to leave a comment, you can. If not, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have a great day, have a great week, great weekend, and it's Christmas time, so I hope you have a great Christmas. And if you're Jewish and celebrate Hanukkah, obviously, uh, have a great Hanukkah. And uh, yeah, have a great uh, holiday season, and a Happy New Year also. Uh, so until next time. See you later.